Hey y'all, hey. We're gonna ride a knowledge wave together. We're gonna ride a wave about why we be body shaming ourselves. Why we don't love all of ourselves. And then I'm gonna surf with you a big personal wave of my own vagina story. So get ready for all that surfing. Oh my God. Hello everyone, I'm Johanna Tunstrom and thank you for coming to my channel and I'm excited to talk to you today about the vagina monologues. Dun, 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 dun. This book isn't a book per se, I'm gonna get meta book on you. It's a political theater play that's meant to be acted out. So each chapter is modularized into a short story, a poem, or a vagina fact. If there's a play near you, I would definitely recommend going and watch that play, sipping some tequila, getting emotional with some people, you know? And it's definitely more like that, uh, what is it called? What is it called? That, that play that everyone watches and then makes fun of it? Cast. No, <laughs> not cast. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes, okay. God bless you! The main premise of this book is that vaginas are important, motherfucking useful body parts that should be given the respect they deserve. I'm not saying you should give them names like dandelion or sunshine. You can if you want to. What I'm saying is you shouldn't call them coochies, pajajays, what's down there. You should just name them the body part. You know, we don't call our breasts booby strawberry lane or little chimneys. We just call them breasts, right? So we should do the same thing with vaginas. And we shouldn't close our eyes to them. I literally, for example, check my boobs every day. I'm like, there they are. There they are in this angle. There they are in that angle, you know? But I never check my vagina. I haven't looked down there. Why is that? Is it shame? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Why? Thousands of tears later. So there are several chapters in this book that are vagina facts. One interesting one that caught my attention is that vaginas have two times the nerve fibers that penises have, which means it's like we have semi-automatic down there. I mean, vagina. The penis is like the gun that only shoots, you know, slow. Five minutes later. We got. Sounds like a sprinkler, but you get what I mean. There are some sexy kind of stories, you know? For example, there's a whole chapter about different types of moans. I only thought there was like a loud moan and a quiet moan. There's actually 20 different types of moans. You wanna find out more, gotta read the book or the play. The poetry sections though, I was just not into at all, okay? You could just skip those chapters all the time. There's some happy stories about women empowerment and coming of age. There's also some really sad stories. I feel like I can't not have a sad portion in this video, but one of the sad stories is one woman was knocked out by her husband to the point that she needed five brain surgeries. I personally knew someone that went through something similar, but it was never that bad. So to hear that story or an even worse situation was out there was pretty bad. And it even talks about like comfort women in Asia. And one of the quotes is, we didn't even have time to put on our panties. And that was just pretty sad. Who should read this book? Definitely read this book if you call your vagina a nonsensical name, okay? <laughs> or if you haven't taken a peek down there in the last decade. Or if you haven't really learned a lot about other countries like Bosnia and comfort women of Asia, then definitely read this book or better yet, watch the play. You should definitely see this as a play, okay? It's a lot better as a play. You'd be sipping some tequila with a crowd of women and men and just supporting these actresses. And usually I think people like cry and they get really real and they discuss the ideas. So definitely watch as a play better than the book, but otherwise watch the book. Now, if you're a guy, Definitely read this book or play, okay? Because, you know, what is it? Like, what, 50% of the world's population is women? And it'd be great to have empathy for that side. There's a long section at the end discussing V-Day, which is like, Vagina Day, which it would be on Valentine's Day. I think it's really good to kind of discuss V-Day because it gives you an idea of what this book is promoting. Number one, art has the power to transform thinking and inspire people to act. Number two, lasting social and cultural change is spread by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. 
Three, local women know their community needs and can become unstoppable leaders. This is definitely shown in the section about the Congolese women who had a vagina warriors program, which is super dope. That was thought of and enacted by Congolese women to and help nurture women after trauma, teach them crafting and a lot of useful skills so that they can go back to their village and teach other women. So I, that was super dope. Four, we must look at the intersection of class, environmental catastrophe, gender, imperialism, militarism, patriarchy, poverty, and racism in order to fully understand violence against women. Just all the, all the isms. So what this book is not, it is not a replacement for sex ed, okay? I thought if I read the vagina monologues, I would become a vagina guru and I would never get a UTI ever again, but that did not happen, okay? At most, this is a good intro to sex ed for little kids so that they don't close their ears during sex ed. Like, when I was a kid, we didn't have sex ed until way later and I accidentally overheard a paragraph from this smut novel that talked about this girl who licked a maple tree and then rode on a maple tree branch. So I just assumed that guys had like little tree branches down there and every time I just like, I was like, I just never saw trees the same way again. This book is pretty inspirational. There's definitely some stories that will inspire you. One of the things it did, which I don't know how I feel about, it made me YouTube vagina. And let me tell you the things that came out. I'm still processing my thoughts on it. I came across vagina knitting, vagina weightlifting, putting makeup on your vagina, the even older gap besides wage gap, orgasm gap, how to make toy vaginas with balloons. And the best thing that I haven't stopped thinking about is a vagina massage and how to give it, okay? Like I'm just imagining this world where we just go to the masseuse and we're like, oh, I have such shoulder pain. And you know, if you could just massage my vagina. And the masseuse is like, oh yes, of course. Like we have very excellent, here's my certificate. I have a five star on Yelp vagina massage review. Also, would you like some molly with your vagina massage? That's illegal. Also, would you like some molly with your vagina massage? I mean, my friend Molly, she's a really nice person. Now, without further ado, I'm sure a personal story. Oh my God. I haven't told you this corner. So nobody told me about periods. I found out the freaking hardest way. I was in the math class and I was bleeding. I didn't know I was peeing. I thought I was peeing. It was like kind of weird thing. Why can't I stop myself peeing? Class ended and the teacher was like, hey, Johanny, class has ended. You can go now. And I was like, I'm just going to sit here. I just enjoy it here so much. There's this math question and I just can't stop pondering it. So I sat there until everybody in the room left. I stood up and I saw that I had blood in the seat. And I took my books and my backpack and then I started scooting out of class like Pink Panther. Like I was just scooting in the, like my butt to the wall and I was stepping sideways. And this kid was just like, why are you walking like that? And I was like, this is so cool. I'm walking like Pink Panther. He's a legend, you know? Like, I don't want to walk like you walk anymore, you plebeians. I'm just going to walk sideways like this. Now that I realize it, I left that seat all bloody. Oh my God, the poor boy or girl after my class. So I walked the 200 meters in the bathroom while sideways because my school is freaking ginormous. And upon the bathroom, I didn't have a phone, okay? This is like early 2000s. And I just cried in the bathroom until some girl came and was just like, do you need help? And I was like, I'm bleeding to death. Please call my parents. And I just the entire time, I was just like, I better write a will. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna die. And then my grandma picked me up and she's just like, yo, homie. This is normal. You just got your period. And I was like, oh, it's a flesh wound. We just got to bandage it up. Grandma, I couldn't find the, where the wound was coming from. I just kept bleeding. And she's like, your vagina is bleeding. I was like, oh my God, we need to go to the hospital. Nope, that's normal. You're going to get that every week for the rest of your life. And I was like, Grandma, you're so funny. She's like, I'm telling you the truth. And I was like, Grandma, you're talking as if I have some deadly cancer. What is this? She's like, no, it's the truth. And I just cried. And I literally cried for like two days straight. This is normal. Why do I have this one? And that's how I found out about lovely periods. Okay? It's why we need freaking sex ed. So this was my review of the vagina monologues. If you like this, click like, subscribe, and see you next time.